Hey, welcome back again. So this is going to be the second um, recording for um, the um, Active Directory security hardening. For the first recording, if you do remember, we had covered um, a few things that are of importance. We covered the password audits with DS internal. We covered the domain controller protocol hardening and Windows protocol hardening. This actually took us some time also because I was a bit busy back and forth. So today we're going to be covering, uh, for this second part, we'll cover the computer account creation, um, which is quite interesting. <laughs> I remember my parents these days, um, um, getting on an environment and um, creating computer accounts because they had not adjusted the quota from 10 to zero by default. Uh, in every AD, it's actually set to 10. We're going to be fixing that. Then we'll be looking at group membership, enabling AD optional features um, using partial uh, final features module. Then also we'll be resetting the KRB TGT um, password using a partial script. Um, it's pretty on GitHub, we just put it up from there and run script. Then we will audit using Pink Castle. So let's get into the business. All right. So firstly, what we're going to do is we're going to be using the Active Directory users and computer console. I'm going to clear the screen. I think um, I can open that up as uh, DS, I think it's DSC, DSA.msc. Right. Uh, right. So we're going to be using this. Okay, so let's go adjust the um, default machine quarter. Uh, we're just going to right click on this. Again, we can view properties here. We should be able to um, see a few details around some generic configuration that we already have in place. But uh, since we want to change that particular attribute, um, we should be able to do that here and make this change. Okay, so um, we will select, um, right click on these, go to properties. Then um, we can see general managed by objects. Again, if you don't see this attribute editor, even if you log in as an admin, you can actually correct that. All you need to do is go to view, then um, advanced feature should be selected. If you don't select this, you won't see those extended feature. Um, so you see it's pretty much basic. So you want to select view, then um, advanced feature should be turned on. Then you can see the full properties. Go to attribute editor. So in our case, um, the machine quarter is what we want to modify here. So we'll look for MSDS machine account quarter, which should actually be an attribute. Um, go down to uh, MS, okay, machine account quarter. So by default, this is set to 10. Now the implication of this is um, any user can add up to 10 machine accounts, which can get complicated or pretty complicated in a big uh, robust active version infrastructure. And um, this is default. It's not a security flaw, it's just design. Um, so it's always recommended that you set this to zero. Um, so we're gonna change that value to zero. Okay on that. Then we're going to apply this change and we've fixed that issue. Now it's pretty basic. Uh, it's just a two or three clicks fix, but I can successfully tell you that I've actually used, uh, taken advantage of this uh, design flaw um, um, in a uh, native directory pen test to actually add machine accounts and users accounts to actually communicate to other resources in the infrastructure. So next we'll go to group membership. Now for group membership, Oh, we're still using the same um, um, template here. So if I drop this down, you would see we've got all these objects created within the secure um, lab, which is our domain, um, for, which we've registered for this particular record. And now um, what we want to do is we want to add um, the inbuilt administrator to protected user group or protected users. And um, why would you want to do that again? default admin um, on your domain controller is as critical as your domain admin account. Most people focus on domain admin, domain admin, but they forget that the default admin on the domain controller is kind of like game over as well. So we want to add that admin to protected 
group. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, make that changes right here and actually add that default administrator to protected user group. Okay, so let's get this done. Now um, you would see that under users, we've got the administrator. If I double click on this, um, I can check around member of this administrator um, account as a member of administrators on this domain, uh, domain admins, domain users. Again, all of these are quite a lot of <laughs> extra extra schema admin. That's like crazy stuff. So what we want to do is we want to try as much as possible to streamline stuff. For instance, if I double click on this, I can see member of um, administrator. So um, what we'll do is we're going to remove maybe schema admin just to simulate um, cleaning of stops. But again, it's important that you verify if this default admin, or if you want that default admin to be a member of these excessive groups, which I would say not the case or should not be the case. Um, very bad. Okay, so we're going to just remove schema admin for the context of just the recording. And um, again, you could also fine tune cleaning up this default admin group, default admin account, sorry, or on the, the, the server machine. Um, just gonna apply this and okay on this. That's it. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to do um, uh, enable extended, uh, we talked about enabling additional or optional features, um, partial modules. So for that particular use case, I've got some partial, I'm just going to do notes here, some partial commands that I'm going to just drag in there and that will walk us through how um, or what they're supposed to be doing when we run these commands um see if my back direction i'll copy paste is fine okay looks good all right so i'm going to clean this up a bit then i'll continue recording okay so these two um optional features will be enabled a uh, one for cycle bin then the other one for um privilege access management i'm just going to copy this from my partial I'll paste this then i should be able to get this run then the same thing applies to the second one. I think I skipped the character. <laughs> I am not sure what I did there. I'm just going to control Z on this. Okay. Enable, cannot convert string uh, required by. Okay, so this is some um, typo issue. Okay, I'm going to have to fix that. Then just continue the recording. Okay, so there we go, we fixed it. I missed the little tick <laughs> in front of it. Okay, so we can see that one in enable recycling bin feature on um, the CN partitions and also configurations for this domain is irreversible, but we're fine with that. Then we're gonna repeat the same for the privilege access management. Um, we'll also enable this feature and we have that done. Now, one final thing, which, oh, sorry, I think this is the second to the last one, which would be to reset the um, KRB TGT uh, password. I'm going to have to use a browser here. Um, I hope I can use a browser. <laughs> Let me see if the internet still works. If it works, we will go to GitHub repo and just pull down the project. Then we would use that project uh, to reset the KRBTGT password. Okay, so as I mentioned, there are two different scripts. Um, the first one, which is this, this is supposed to clear um, any cache on clients. Um, you want to be very careful <laughs> when running these scripts because um, if your this is sync is not effective in place or effectively in place, you might break stuff. <laughs> so this this particular one clears the cache then this one um, would reset the password. I'm not going to go into details of all. This is a very, very robust script. So I will leave a link to um, this. This is actually gotten from Microsoft GitHub repo. I'll leave a link to this if you want to try this, but please do not try this on a production environment, okay? <laughs> all right, so let's um, navigate to where we have those files and um, pretty much run them. So I'm going to go into admin. 
I think it should be in my downloads folder. Okay, so there we have them. So we're going to run the first um, one if we want to clear the cache. But uh, for the context of the recording, I'm just going to run the second one. I won't run the first one. So if you run this, it's going to start this script and it's going to prompt you um, follow the instruction. So do you want to read information about the script, um, its function, its behavior, and its impact? Well, I recommend you read this. Look, I don't want to read this, <laughs> but I recommend you read this anyways. So I'll put it in all there. Then it's going to start loading the uh, partial modules, like the directory. If it's loaded, then it's going to just follow the progress. I'll pause this. Then um, once this is done, I will come back. Please specify the mode of operation. So we have information on mode, simulation on mode, real reset mode, which is what we want to do. We would use the KRBTGT prod seal accounts. Um, we'll be specifying an account there. But um, I would recommend you do like a simulation mode first or like a test simulation mode for testing or a test environment before doing this. So I'm just going to select the fourth mode here. Then it's going to ask me for the AD forest to be targeted. Please provide the fully qualified domain name or press enter for the current AD. I'm using the current AD, so I'm just going to push enter there for the AD domain to be targeted. I will use the current AD domain. Then it's going to start gathering information and doing its thing. I will pause the recording. Once it's done, I will come back and continue the recording with us. Okay, so our reset is done. Now a few things it's going to prompt you to supply um, um, some targets. Do you want to reset this for all read write or do you want to reset this for read only domain controller? I did it for read write, uh, pretty much everything. And, um, then you would see a bit more details around um, the domain, then the sum account for the targets. Um, then as well as uh, previous numbers when this had been reset or previous times or timestamp. Then you're also going to see the start time and end time, as well as there'll be a log stored here. I would recommend you review this log. You would find it in the directory where the script is. In my context, it's going to be in download. So you'll see I've got um, this log here. I would recommend you pretty much review everything that has been done just so you keep check on what was done and for conveniency and tracking purpose as well. Now, the last thing I'm going to be doing for today, uh, because I, I pretty much not want this to extend beyond the time. Now, you can also reset this by following instruction in Microsoft's documentation page, which I'll also attach to um, this video for, for reference. The final thing I'll do is the audits, so which I'll be using Pink Castle to do that. So I'm going to start a CMD. Um, I will start the CMD, run this an ad, as an admin. Then I will go into the folders where I want to get this done. So first I'll just do, um, I think I don't want to run this in C32. It goes to step back. Oh, my badge. Um, so we will go into um, users. Admin. Let's go into our download folders. Okay, so we will make a directory here. We'll call it um, maybe reports. Um, we're going to reports. Okay, so what we're going to do is basically we're going to run the uh, pink castle binary which I have in my tools folder and let it run the audit on the AD so we can see what we are or where we are at, at the current state if we have improved on our security or if it's still crappy or wacky. So that's in my D drive. Uh, all tools folder. In that all tools folder, there's um tools. And in choose there is a um, pink castle. Then in pink castle, I have pink castle binary. So I don't want this. I want the pink castle.exe binary. So I'm going to run a basic health check on this. Okay. So it's just that easy. If I run this, if I have the binary, it's going to start. This also might take a while, but it's a small 
aid infrastructure, so it should be pretty fast. Once it's done, we would see a report generated. There will be a HTML report, um, which we'll start reviewing to see where we stand currently in our security posture. Okay, so um, analysis is done. Um, I'm just going to scroll a bit up so we'll see what was done. So it's gathering domain information, verify the domain, then it starts taking objects in the domain, then gotta use a data, computer data, trust data. It's just gonna collect all those for analysis, then also gathering the GPO configuration delegation as well as every other config we have. Once this is done, we would see a report. So if I go in the reports folder, we should have the reports. Um, I'm just going to open this. It's going to open it on the default browser, which is this crappy stuff here. <laughs> so I hope this stuff loads. If it doesn't, I'll just use Firefox to open this. Okay, wait for this to load. All right, so this is what it looks like on Firefox. Now we can see that domain risk level is 55 out of 100. We've been able to streamline a few things. Uh, we still have quite a number of things to address <laughs> on our objects, our trusts. This seems to be really good. Again, most of the config we've done in recent reflects around this space. So we can still see we have a lot to cover within privilege account space and anomaly space as well. Now you can drill into each of these to see more details. It allows for that. Um, I'm not going to be doing that here. Uh, I would usually recommend start with the ones with the red flags so you can treat them as fast as possible. I still see authentication. Again, we know that these had been addressed recently. Probably the um, GP update had not really propagated this, but we fixed this. One of the things we were fixing actually was the land manager authentication, as well as the NTLM version one authentication, which we've completely stripped off. Then pass the credential, lab doesn't seem to be installed. Well, that's something we might want to look into. You can follow the link here for more details if you want to. It's going to show you how to fix that. Um, then also account takeover. This is also a really big one. Again, this is something that we want to fix. Number of admin with a password other than three years. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you want to fix this crap. Okay. Then we can also see maturity level as well as mapping with the monitor. Then also stale objects. Uh, this is one thing that I usually recommend um, clean up. This, we've already fixed this. We need to clean up a bit so we can also have that reflected on our overall score. Um, this is where I'm going to call a shot for this recording. I'm not going to go into details touching each of these, but it's pretty easy and user friendly. You can just walk through each of the results and um, better understand how secure your aid infrastructure is or the areas you want to focus on in terms of priority to start fixing stuff. Anyways, thanks for your time. And um, I do appreciate your patience sticking around till the second video. And um, hopefully we do more content similar to this, uh, probably trying to verify if our config we've done are pretty much safe or keep, keeps us in a better posture. Once again, have a good day. Thanks for your time and bye.